I'm very happy to have the opportunity to present to you an alternative passage to El Dorado. It's called The Big Detachment. Uh, the title of this case study describes the, the metamorphosis of the art market from a pure idealism over to professionalism into a global industry. So. Okay, let's start with the market. The art market is divided into two segments, as we all know after all these talks. A, the gallery market, also called the primary market, which focuses on art fresh from the studio. And B, the dealer market, also called the secondary market, which focuses on the resales of works of art. Uh, yeah, you can see it. Every artist career ripes in the primary art market, where any artistic production has to undergo a ruthless extractive distillation through repeating curator selection, public exhibit, and intellectual discourse to become an object of value ready to be resold over and over on the dealer market. This is what this diagram shows us. The quality of an artwork by an old master could be easily referred by the painter's ability to eyeball and compose an illustrated image. In this scenario, a simple market structure as displayed on this screen functions very well. There's a constant temptation for dealers to cut short the distillation process provided by the gallery market. The trick is to put artworks right from the studio on auction. By stripping off the primary market, the value-producing segment vanishes. This market scenario will lead to the extinction of intellect and leaves only capital in a socially dead market. Sorry <laughs> for my <laughs> harsh words. <laughs> but I need to show you this now. There's a reason. Let us take a look at the distribution. This is this of artists between primary and secondary market. We can easily perceive that the number of artists who became an asset class is unbelievably small. It's the tick of the iceberg. One out of a thousand. And these hundreds of thousands of artists these others, artists, are not hobbyists. They spit blood, sweat and tears in an everyday working life. In a real-world scenario, where everybody is concentrating on just the very few, the great numbers of lives are pushed aside. It's like uh, looking at an iceberg, where you just see the tip and the huge path big thing that carries the tip of the iceberg is underwater. Markets are a system, and systems have structure. Well-functioning markets have basic structural characteristics. Many small buyers and sellers, like the art market, buyers and sellers have equal access to information, not like the art market. Products are comparable, a little bit like the art market. 
Extreme examples of failed markets are monopolies and monopsonies. In our everyday life, we are concerned about monopolies. If, for example, one company controls the local energy market, electrical power will be overpriced and take a lot of our discretional income. In the art market, and especially in the gallery market, it is the monopsony that creates failure. A, monopsy, a monopsony <laughs> is the polar opposite of a monopoly, with only one buyer and multiple sellers. One collector versus a thousand galleries. Imagine that scenario. I don't want <laughs> to see that <laughs> when everybody is running after this poor one collector. A market failure is always associated with information asymmetries. Information asymmetries lead to uncertainty. Uncertainty, uncertainty is undermining trust, and trust is the essence of the art market. So, my proposed solution is to quantify the unquantifiable. Don't leave the numbers to the dealers. Just to give you some figures, yeah, we are talking about 400,000 artists and nearly 20,000 operating galleries. It's this huge space it makes up 90% where we don't have any kind of quantified, quantified data. It's only there for the secondary market for the auction analysis, what everybody knows. So now it's time to explain how a simple artist career meter can be built. And you see, it's very simple. The ingredients we need are galleries, museums, artists. That's all. No price information. The galleries represent the artist, and the museum collects the artist. On this slide, you can see three artists, two museums, and one gallery. The gallery and one museum are located in the UK. One museum is located in the USA. So to go back how this will work, we have the galleries, the museums, the artists they represent and collect. And because it's a global business, the location of these institutions, in this case, the countries. So let's count. Artist one is represented by a UK gallery and collected by a UK museum. It's one, two, and it's a country, three. Artist two is represented by the same UK gallery and is in a collection of a museum located in the US. Let's count, it's one, two, and two countries makes four. Artist three is a no collection. In the second calculation step, we can associate the artist's long-term network points to the galleries and museums. The gallery gets seven points for artist one and artist two. Artist one, three. Artist two, four points. Because a gallery can never be as big as a museum of the same size. We just divide the points by two. So it's 3.5 points. The same we do for the UK Museum and the US Museum with three and four points. In a third and last computation, 
we could each of these institutions reputation, what I call it now, so we have relatively easy bound a fundamental level of points. These are called reputation points. And um, the institution will, for each show an artist has in one of these institutions, they will gain the points. Full points for a solo show participation and the half of the points for a group show participation. So in this case, if, for example, artist three, as you might recall, he had zero points, would have a show in the US Museum, he would get four points. In our scenario, he would be the number one artist, there's only one artist. If in another artist would have a show there, he would get three points, five points, and so on. So we could just add the points of the institutions by counting their exhibitions and adding it to the artist's accounts. And then the artist with the most points is number one, with the second most points, number two, and so on. On this slide, you can see the outcome of a more sophisticated ranking that also measures the biennial participation, as you can see here. The Belgian sculptor Berlinde de Brückere, for example, has participated 2013 in the 55th edition of the Venice Biennial. She received 400 points. For this event, and as a result, her ranking jumped by 188 rows. An artist, exhibition ranking like the one explained, helps to overcome the lack of price information in the primary sector. And because every artist gets the same points for, parti for participating in the 55th edition of the Venice Biennale, the ranking system is transparent and easy to follow. Without knowing the real market value for the works produced by Belinde de Brückere, we can say that she makes a pretty damn good job in this ruthless competitive primary market. She has a ranking of somehow 400, and in this case, there are 100,000 artists ranked. I think this is, this is a very, very good result. The remaining group are the intermediaries between artists and collectors, the galleries. I will show you how to build a ranking system for galleries without knowing any sales figures. We already have a career meter for artists, what I have just shown, and this will be of help. The only thing what is left to do, in my point of view, is to identify some key characteristics of a good gallery. Key, char key characteristics are to discover artists, to anticipate future trends, to represent artists, to stand for their artists and build their careers, to show artists, to rent a room in the expensive center of the city, <laughs> devoted, dev devoted only to show art and nothing else. This is a commitment in my point of view. And fourthly and lastly, to involve in an open competition with other galleries, to participate on an art fair where every gallery is equalized in a small booth and looks the same and only differentiates by their work they present. The ability to discover future top artists can be measured by counting the number of top artists that have been exhibited in the gallery during the first year of existing on the primary sector. The ability to represent can be measured by counting the number of artists 
you have continuously exhibited. And they are trending in this time. So this means we don't look just at a list, I represent this and this artist. No, we just take a closer look at the exhibition history of the gallery and see, is this artist repeatedly showing year after year or every second year in the gallery? And in the meantime, in, the, in this process of time, let's say it's five years, the rank of this artist has to go up. That can indicate that this might have something to do with good gallery work. The ability to exhibit can be measured by counting the points of artists you have shown in the past. We just adopt a career meter, an exhibition career meter, and sum up the points of your past artists you have shown in your past exhibitions. The ability to involve can be measured by counting the number of art fairs and weighting the art fairs, and putting this all together in a sum. So the gallery who has participated in the strongholds, Art Basel, Friese, Armory Show, you name it, will get more points than a gallery who, present, who were, was shown at three lesser known fairs. So let's see. Gallery ranking, first impression. Gregorian number top. <laughs> cool. I was quite surprised. On this slide, you can see a freshly produced ga gallery ranking. So this is something I have done in the last days. Yeah? This is nothing that is really sorrow and sound. It's just done with a hot needle. But the outcome is interesting. On the slide, you can see a freshly pr produced weighted list of 37 galleries with their names, foundation year, and country of origin. Each gallery in the list gains stars for the ability to reach the top in one of our four categories. The, point, the points for each attribute are summarized, and the galleries that reach a, defini a defined quantum are marked with a bold star, as we can see. So the maximum you can get is five stars, and the minimum is zero. And the maximum is easily found out by looking in each closer, take a closer look at each attribute, and the gallery who has the most points with this attribute gets five stars, and the gallery with the lowest outreach gets zero. And um, you have to uh, see that it's a total of nearly 17,000 galleries, existing galleries, that have been analyzed yesterday. And this morning I had a, a conversation with a collector and he said the Leo Castelli gallery is still existing. Yeah, but I checked, it seems to be existing. It's not the old Leo Castelli gallery, of course, but it's there. So you can see here that five galleries received five stars. These galleries are led by the Kogosian Gallery. Eight galleries received four stars. These galleries are led by the Leo Castelli Gallery. 24 galleries received three stars. They are led by Chantal Crousel, France. 172 galleries received two stars. They are led by Wagner Art from Australia. 4,170 4, galleries received one star, led by Barbara Mattes Gallery in the USA, and 11,463 received no star yet. So you can see that it's a, the, the biggest number of galleries doesn't really meet these attributes fully. It's, they are maybe too harsh. We have to look into that into the future. So a ranking tool like this can be used to quickly identify galleries by their qualities. For example, here you can see it's just a screenshot of an odd computer programming nerd style. There's the select query to get out of this huge amount of data. These galleries that have the most stars 
in Discovery. So we have here Listen Gallery, Galerie Nech Stefan, Rosemarie Schwarzwälder, Leo Castelli Gallery, Andrea Rosen, 303, Maureen Pelle, Galeries Denise René, and Alex Forever. So you are the experts. You have to see if this somehow fits to your notion. But this is what the computer says when we apply the calculations what I've made. We could also take a snapshot on the galleries that have been showing on the Paris Internationale that was there two weeks ago in Paris, a side event to the FIAC. And it's uh, supposed to be a young gallery fair. There's one gallery from 89. Now you can see that this gallery already has gained some kind of reputation, and even these younger galleries are earning stars. What I, what I find uh, uh, very, very interesting, because you have to see that the great, great, great majority of uh, galleries received no star in these calculations. Um, we could also <laughs> print play cards for top drum gains, and um, look at different gallery stars and compare them and make a stack for our own use or for fun. And whatever you might personally think about machine-produced rankings, standards are powerful and transparency is key. Overcoming information asymmetries, tears down anti-barriers to future collectors. We have heard this here during many speeches. As a last word, I really, 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 really want to encourage you not to be afraid of big data. Do not make the mistake to confuse data mining with your personal knowledge of a trained artist, art historian, or market expert. A race driver, for example, may not need a speed meter. They drive with their bum and have a gut feeling for speed. But we, as occasional drivers, can make good use of a speed indicator. The same applies to the modern collector. They don't have the time to become a connoisseur. They are dependent on helpers and tools to overcome the dreadful uncertainty. On this, like the first slide mm -hmm. um, with the ranking, uh, it was very obvious to see that uh, in the discovery sec um, um, segment there was mm -hmm. Uh, one gallery, uh, uh, Rosemarie Schwarzwälder, mm -hmm. with five stars, and probably everyone else yes. zero to none stars. Uh, and even mm -hmm. in the in the in the young um, mm -hmm. uh, um, area where, where you had Paris uh, International, mm -hmm. which is like a fair young gallery, is probably starting with young artists. There was none stars whatsoever. Uh, it, it seems like there's sort of a lacking of. Um, uh, of or well maybe the, the it's too close of a year to to narrow the sector down. I think it's um, yeah. It was uh, this one. Why is this Austrian gallery having five discovery points? The, the question is very simple. The data is not spread equally. So this gallery has such a huge number of artists they have shown in the past. I mean it's a old gallery that have become or that have reached a top 5,000 level in our artistic career meter. So that they overtook the other galleries, which do not have shown within the first year of the artist presence in the gallery segment, which means the first shows, trending artists in this on that scale. So it's, it's, a, it's a number that is extraordinarily high. Yeah. And um, you could say, you could arg also argue then that Leo Castelli Gallery did also a lot, but not as many as this gallery. That's just 
by playing the numbers. And, um, but then, hmm? I mean, you you give a bigger, um, how do you say, uh, weight on galleries who are um, far older, but and in terms of uh, ranking galleries or defining quality or something, um, uh, it's I think there sort of the computer system starts uh, not really working again because um, yeah, of uh, course I mean um, Rosemary Schwarzwald has been there since a long time and discovered a lot of artists and still works with them uh, which is amazing but you see like most of the which really good galleries which are even advanced they just have like one star or two stars or so and uh, compared to the other. Um, to, to yes. the other segments. But so you for can me, this is a bit, uh, yeah. it's a bit off. I can understand. It's, it's not a human being who did this ranking. Okay. It's not a, a ranking that is conducted by a magazine where 10 editors sit together and discuss this through. It's a query to a machine yeah. with, rank, with formula. There can be a lack of data. For example, maybe we don't know for certain galleries if they really exhibited this artist within the first year of the career, because we don't know when the career started. Maybe we don't have the data. So there are all kinds of obstacles. But uh, to counterfy your argument, when you, see, when you look at the number one uh, gallery, then you see there's zero discovery factor. So the attribute of the Kogosian gallery in this case is zero. They don't discover artists. Yeah, and I, I would say that everybody here would um, say the same. This is not a gallery that discovers artists, but this is so much present with I don't know how many branches and satellites where they conduct shows that they just, you know, that their presence is just so overwhelming that they uh, can kill other attributes with that. So you don't need to have five stars in one of these attributes. And, and as I have listed, it's, it's, it's only four galleries that reach five stars. Of course, when we would work on a tool that was for sale, for example, or that should be, you know, um, uh, brought into the market, there wouldn't be five galleries left with five stars, for sure not. I mean, this is too, too, this is, uh, the calculations are too strong. Yeah, it's, it's too much. There are not many galleries who can bear this. So we, we have to play with that. Yeah, and uh, um, uh, to, to tell you again, this wasn't existing uh, three days ago. So it's done with a hot needle. I just compiled data, huge amounts of data, and was thinking about the outcome. And I was also afraid of doing this by, because you come there, ask a machine, and the machine spits out something, and then you have galleries in there, Gebrüder Lehmann Dresden, nothing against Gebrüder Lehmann Dresden, but it's, it's 35 of 60,000. 16, this can be questioned, of course. So we have to take a deeper look into this. But this gallery met the representation factor. So this means that this is a gallery that sticks to their artist what I think is an uh, attribute that should be highly evaluated, right? And so I want to invite you and I want to invite the audience, and this is why I accepted uh, the request from Emilio Alvarez, because I think this is something we should discuss. As I said, we, don't, we shouldn't leave this whole sector, this whole industry with so many participants unquantified and leave it to the auction market. I just show you, uh, go back and... Uh, do you, do you want to leave this to gossip? To, to, to leave this to the person who is the best on uh, Instagram, who can talk, has the most richest friends or what? Uh, can this be a scenario? I mean, to be honest, uh, I, I would like to uh, have your opinion on this, but uh, how can it be that we have uh, artworks? Let's say this is an artwork, and I'm the gallerist, and my friends are students, so I sell this for 100 euros. I'm the same gallerist, but I'm in the local golf club here in Barcelona. The same artwork, the same artist, that costs 10,000. Then I live in New York and be there amongst the super network individuals. Same artwork, costs 100,000. I mean, this can't be true. What is then the measure there, right? So I would like to question this, and I would like to encourage you to, um, to open up this market to make it understandable for outsiders, to give them certainty and trust, yeah, to give the people the trust that, that what they buy is worth what they buy it for. And this is not a, a, a playground for uh, somebody who has a certain discretional income. Let's say I'm a student, so I have 100 euros, or I'm a billionaire, so I have 100,000 or a million. I mean, what kind of quality meter is this? Yeah? So it, it should be, there should be something, in my point of view. 
And um, I, I really invite you to throw things at me <laughs> so that I can uh, open a discussion here. Good afternoon, Lucas, uh, the Arnold Gallery Hub. I crunch yeah. figures too, since years. Yeah. And the, f the first results I see from your ranking mm -hmm. corresponds really closely to my results. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, 20, the first 25 f top 50 galleries, they're always the same. And to must also to my surprise, the top segment of galleries is extremely, extremely, extremely small. Uh, we talk about eight to maximum 15 galleries. Yes, I mean, this is what these figures also tell yeah. us, right? So, yeah. uh, but this my has result, to be... My results <laughs> differ a little bit. Gagosin doesn't come top. Yeah. In my results, Gagosin is only 10th. It depends on the data, on the equation yeah. you put on it. It's, and it's you it's have lacks in your figures. I have some... Well, it's d very difficult to go back until 54 yeah. or 60, uh, pre-internet age. You only have catalogs from galleries, yes. etc. And it's a huge amount of data to collect and to, and to compute. But it's pretty close to my results, still. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I uh, want to also emphasize, emphasize on something else. It's I'm, I'm living here in a, thanks to the talking gallery committee, <laughs> very good hotel. It has, I think, suppose, imagine five stars. And, uh, but I also like to stay in bed and breakfast. I really like Airbnb. So I, re I mean, and I really mean that, nobody has to be five-star gallery. And to be honest, if I would be gallerist, I would think twice if I want to be five-star galleries. Yeah, when you go to FIAC and talk to the galleries, which are there on the ground floor, they are under stress. Yeah, and uh, you go to the small fairs and it's relaxing. Yeah, you can enjoy walking, wander through the booths and have a talk here and have a talk there. In FIAC, it's stress. So it's okay and it's important that we have people who jump into this scenario and do the stress. And it's good that we have five star hotels, but it's also good that we have Airbnb and bread and breakfast. Yeah, this should be go together. But we know what a five-star hotel is, there's a five-star sign, and we know what a bread and breakfast is, there's a bread and breakfast sign. Why not uh, do the same with galleries, right? We don't have to, but why not? It's an idea. I don't say I'm God, yeah, but it's an idea what we could seriously think of doing. What is your proposition, for example, an idea? What do you mean with that? <laughs> what you asked to ask, I asked to you. No, what I mean, I, I, uh, I presented a possible way of how to do it, right? So we all know, and we have all attended here in uh, the last two days, many great talk, and we, we, um, uh, we have learned that in the primary and the gallery market, there's no market information available. When you ask the galleries, it's problematic, they give you a price range. Yeah, and uh, in every other market, right, when you buy uh, a laptop, it says, now sale. 1,000 euros. If you have a student card, you get 10% reduction. Why can't the gallery say on an art fair, on this art fair, this artwork costs 10,000 euros? That's it, full stop. And if you're a museum, you get a discount or a super collector, and then everybody knows what's happening. And then uh, people can uh, also you know, post this on Instagram. Yeah, on FIAC is this price for this and this artwork. This would be an attempt. But there's also an attempt to look at the... Um, at the standard of working, of the working standards of the gallery. Does the gallery meet these standards? And uh, if we all agree on a consensus, yeah, we, I had this, heard this word here as well in the very first day, consensus, yeah, on standards, which are industry standards on how to operate, we could then do number crunching on it. Yeah? We could translate these standards into numbers and count these numbers and then apply, for example, stars, or st that can be anything else, a standard and poor's ranking, triple A, whatever. Yeah, so uh, there are possibilities. And uh, I just um, think that you, should, uh, you shouldn't say, wow, this is all mad. You should seriously think about it. Because there's, 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 we are living in a time where that is really changing, right? These new people, when I live in Berlin, for example, and in Berlin we have a growing group of middle-class entrepreneurs out of the internet. 
like in America, the super rich Silicon Valley, but small. You go in the flats, beautiful flats of these people, beautifully furnished with design furnished. They have their Porsche down there, but no art. How can that be? Yeah, I mean, I really here have all these professionals here. Why is there no art? So there's something wrong in my point of view. These are people 35 years of age. They don't collect art. Why? Maybe because there are no standards. Maybe they don't want to be framed. They don't, maybe they don't want to go into an art fair and buy. I just had this discussion uh, outside in a restaurant with uh, Paolo. He's somewhere here. And, um, uh, and he did a, a photo fair. Yeah? Let's say you go to a photo fair and discover a photography of an artist you like. And you are an internet entrepreneur. And you come home. And the next day, you buy a magazine. And in the magazine is a celebrated photographer presented that does photos in the same fashion like the stuff you just bought. I would feel stupid, to be honest. I would feel framed. So why not checking the artist ranking if this artist that is there presented is highly or low ranked? Because a curator does not fall into the trap. The curators know what's out there. The professionals know what's out there. And they exhibit what's good, or what they think is good, and what is, what is rooted in history, right? What, is, what has a sound history. So that where, where you can build on development in the, within the art world, and uh, but the outsiders don't know that, yeah. And uh, and it can't be that, uh, uh, that 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 we don't look at these people and say, nose up, uh, you're not intellectual, you don't know nothing, uh, you don't go to all these openings, you don't go to biennials, you are stupid. No, we should open this market to as much people as possible, yeah, because. Why is it that on FIAC uh, the, the gallerist gets nervous because they sell, let's say, five paintings or so, maybe ten, and they spend, I don't know, 100,000 euros with full stuff there, with hotel, transport, booths, and everything. What if they would sell 100 paintings? Just an idea. Then they don't have to be that nervous and can lower the price. So this is something I would like to throw to you, right, to think about it. I can't change the world, but I would like you to digest this information. Yeah. So, yeah. Ah, hello. <laughs> uh, I'm just curious, how do you update uh, all this information? I just checked uh, the homepage now quickly, mm -hmm. and um, there are lots of uh, information is, which is not uh, mm, updated. For example, I just uh, checked uh, the artist, one of my artists who's mm -hmm. exhibiting currently at the Venice Biennale, and it's updated with this fact, but uh, uh, then you state the solo shows, and uh, well, it's, uh, it's ended in 2013. So how, how do you do this? Because it's, uh, it's like um, if somebody is looking at this page, then might think that, well, this artist had a solo show last time in 2013, but it's actually not true. And also mm -hmm. I checked the, the, the um, exhibition spaces of Budapest, and some of them you know, existed like for a very, very short time, and it's, um, it's a kind of strange list. So how, how do you it do depends. it? It depends. But if do it's you, a strange do you list, but I don't know if they are, because we list closed. But how do you get well, this right? information? Do you get from the institutions? So those who are not sending to you, then you, you are Wha not how aware? Do you get that? How would you do it? So you would go to the internet and you would do the most important institutions first, right? So you would do Venice Biennale, Tate, mm -hmm. MoMA, PS1. This is what you would do, first of all, to have something you know, solid. And then you work your way down. And I was telling you that there are 16,000 galleries, right? And all in all, we have to w look after 40,000 institutions. So mm, we do as good as we can, but top down. So and is it uh, possible to, to send you some huh? refreshments? What? Is it possible to send you some updates? Of course. And you, you you have, would I think you have my cards, don't you? You have my card. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so just send it. So yeah. and you, everybody can send us. So we ha always have something like 10,000 unanswered emails li lying around of missing exhibition requests. Yeah. But we are talking here about millions of exhibitions. I just don't talk about 100 exhibitions or so. Yeah, we have already listed 700,000. So of course, this is not everything in there. But to be honest, uh, nothing against Budapest. But if there's one solo show missing in a gallery in Budapest, I don't think that this would change. To be no, not at all. Yeah. Hmm? Herr Klassen. Herr Klassen. Yes. Now, Artifacts Nuts is it's huge. It's a huge enterprise. It's a magnificent initiative. 
But you have to admit, I have to second Mrs. Mrs. Molnar too. You have to admit, there are tremendous lacks of information there. It's an it's a ex excellent starting base, and I use it sometimes. I used it back, back years ago. I used it as a starting point. But there are too much. And I understand because the amount of information you have is tremendous. And it can't be impossibly to, to keep this up, up to date. I know you do it f almost physically, no? But you have to. You I've have to. I know, you know I there, know, there's, there's no an artist way. in our database called Art Basel. Yeah, Come on. I know. <laughs> yeah, you have I to know check this. Is this really an artist group? This can be. Yeah? Or yeah, is this a, a mistake? We but have. It's I tell you something. And the weakness of your initiative. And no, I, I, I tell you something to interrupt you, right? I tell you something. We have things happening you can't believe. We have invitation cards sent to us with which are manipulate, manipulated with Photoshop. We have museums created in the internet with a full history that are non existent. Uh, have websi websites of galleries are listing attendances to art fest. They never attended. People like to cheat rankings. Yeah. Of course, they should. So what have to we have to do? That's we have to check internet, every yeah? single thing. Of course, there are mistakes. When you enter millions of data sets, people make mistakes. Let's say five or ten percent of the data has a tweak somewhere, but the majority of it is of course okay. Now, yeah. if I would, uh, I would suggest to you to ma make a major update of the information. Available on artifacts. Uh, yeah, I don't know when you have lastly looked. Like uh, this, right now. <laughs> well, no. You could check with uh, her <laughs> computer. No, it's not a critique. It's, no, it's, yeah, yeah. it's such a fantastic tool, and it's the first tool existing on the web almost. So the only thing I would suggest is please, a major update. We do. So I understand your point about transparency. I totally agree with you. We all agree that we need more transparency. But do you really think that someone needs to watch a ranking to take a decision on what he likes, what he wants to buy? You really think we need this? No, of course not. Of course not. I don't need a ranking to know what I know what I like and I know what I dislike. Of course, everybody knows this. I mean, hopefully. But imagine you're going in a video rental, right? You have 10 minutes because you rush home and you want to surprise your wife with a video. I cross-check with IMDb, even if I've, I've seen hundreds of movies from the whole movie history I've seen. So I know about movies, but you go in the rental and see this vast, vast, vast amount of uh, films, and I check cross-check with IMDb. And I mostly take the one that I like, what is highest, highest ranked. Maybe I'm the only one, but it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't say I don't have uh, taste, right? I just use this as a tool, like a speed meter in a car. When I'm speeding on the highway and I want to, uh, you know, go out of the highway, then I look at this uh, uh, speed meter and go down to 60, just in case. But don't you think this is a little bit against the essence of art collecting? No, not at all, because you don't have to use it. You don't have to do it. It's, it's just a tool. It's like a hammer. You know, you could, can say, I don't use hammer, I use a stone. Yeah, because I think hammers are industry products, I don't want to use them, so you just use a stone. Why not? Yeah, it's, it doesn't mean that a hammer is bad just because it's there. And it, you, know, you know what I mean. So you, it, I don't say that this is the Bible. I just say and present it as a mean, as a tool yeah, to do something fast. Yeah, and this doesn't, of course, uh, 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 substitute for taste, and it doesn't 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 say that that uh, that uh, that you should yeah, just look at a machine. I mean, what does a machine know? Nothing. For a machine, this is a pure numbers. The machine doesn't know who the closing gallery is. Yeah. So Thank <laughs> you very much. <laughs> so we appreciate <laughs> the effort that you made. Oh.